Hello again, this is Michael Whitaker. This is photo post 12 of the 21 photo posts I'm doing on LinkedIn and sharing on Facebook. The topic of this post is creating contextual backdrops. And I'll explain that in a bit. The photo I'm using for this post is simply entitled Fire Eater on Sunset Pier. If you've never been, Sunset Pier is in Key West, Florida. At sunset, all the tourists and some of the locals go down to the Sunset Pier and watch the sunset. And which, with such large number of people in one place, over the years they developed a habit of performers showing up uh, before the sunset and performing, and they all have a place for you to drop in uh, coins or dollars uh, to express your appreciation for their performance. So this photograph was captured in Key West, Florida on the Sunset Pier. So a little background for this slide, uh, for this post, is that in my first career, I had a reputation of dealing with complex issues. Uh, when I created programs or I, I worked with one population and changed another population, there were a range of issues. And I just had a reputation uh, and lots of experiences dealing with complex issues. Thus, it was no surprise to anyone when I took up photography as my career that my photographs typically reflected complex images. Uh, I'll talk more about whether people like or dislike complex images. But in the beginning, when I created these images, I was photographing people. I was capturing candid photos of people. Uh, Richard Hurst, Rich Hurst, my teacher and mentor, uh, looked at my pictures and said, you know, I really like the image of the people that you're capturing. He said, it's like you've captured an actor on a stage. He said, you've done a great job of capturing the actor. He said, the problem is all of the actors are on the same stage. What he was saying was that I was using a very short, a very narrow depth of field, which was blurring the background behind my subjects. So I was showing the people, you could see their faces uh, very clearly and rich like what he saw, but it was a blurred, almost blank background behind them. So Rich encouraged me to continue taking complex photographs uh, for two reasons. One, he said one-dimensional or limited-dimensional photographs are too much like commercial photographs with no artistic value. There's nothing wrong with commercial photographs. They play a very valuable role. But if your interest is in capturing an artistic image, uh, commercial images are very limited. Also, Rich said that uh, with the blurred blank background, uh, my images look too much like portraits. Uh, there's nothing wrong with portraits. Uh, one of my favorite pictures of my son is a portrait picture. But Rich said if you blur or blank out the background, it's no longer a candid image. A candid image includes the whole scene. A candid image includes the context. The context is something, it's all the information going on at the time that provides a deeper understanding of what's going on. You have content, which is just straight content, tells you what it says, what it's doing, what it means, and all that. But the context provides a broader, more robust image of what's going on in the entire situation. So Rich encouraged me to continue to create complex images. I'm not going to give a, com uh, a complicated technical explanation here of the dynamics of photography. 
But there is a thing in photography called the exposure triangle. It has to do with shutter speed, aperture, and ISO. If you're interested in the exposure triangle, and if you're a serious photographer, you should be, you can look that up on the internet or find resources about that. I want to say that my simplistic way of dealing with uh, bringing in the context of the photo is by trying to control, trying to manipulate the depth of field. How much information you can see from the main subject all the way to the background. A very narrow depth of field will give you the focus face with the blurred or blank background. A very deep depth of field will give you information as far as you can see almost. The way I accomplish depth of field is by adjusting the f-stop. Uh, the greatest depth of field on my camera is an f-stop of f-22, and I get almost infinity out of that. Uh, but the f-stop depends on the available light and some factors with your camera and lens and all that sort of stuff. So with my background, my camera, my lenses, uh, I ideally would like to have an f-stop of 22. But that's not always achievable. In fact, it's not achievable most of the time. So I settle, or it's okay, to have an f-stop that ranges from f8 to f22. So this is another technique that I always keep in mind when I'm capturing images, when I'm photographing. It doesn't affect my way of viewing the world. It affects my way of capturing the information I want to share about my way of viewing individual photographs. So I prefer an F of 22, but I'll settle for anywhere between 8 and 22. I have spent a lot of time in Key West. I have a dear, dear friend there, Ron McGregor, who we worked together for a while uh, with a very difficult project. When I left and moved on to the next project, Ron wrote me a note using Melanie's uh, lyrics from Candles in the Rain, and he said we bled together in the same wound, and that was true. Ron and I had shared so much together we had suffered through so much together and literally had bled together in the same wound on a couple of occasions. So I was very close to Ron and tried to spend as much possible, as much time as possible with Ron in Key West. Couldn't get Ron to come see me where I lived, but I was always willing to go to see Ron in Key West. So I'd spent time in Key West. I'd been around the Sunset Pier a lot. I love sunsets. I had seen photographs. I had seen postcards of this fire eater, okay? And the postcards were just of him. He could have been on his back deck having somebody photograph him eating the fire. So I wanted to create something more interesting than just a picture of this fire eater. So what I did, I positioned myself with the fire eater between me and the audience. I wanted to create an image. I wanted to capture an image with the fire eater in the foreground and the audience and their reactions in the background. I wanted audience reactions to be the backdrop, the contextual backdrop of this photograph. So I had to position myself in a way where I could get the fire eater and the audience. I also deliberately positioned myself where the setting sun, which was going down quickly at this point, was also uh, facing the audience. It was behind me. It was behind uh, or to the this side of the image of the fire eater. And the setting sun was shining light directly onto the audience because light's a factor when you're trying to get a larger depth of field. So I set myself up in this image. I actually like the light that's hitting the audience at this point. And I captured this image. I captured several images. If you look at the audience and their faces, 
uh, is sort of a unique panorama of people. Uh, there was an artist back when I was younger who was almost always on the front of the Saturday Evening Post magazine called Norman Rockwell. And the audience remind me of a normal Norman Rockwell painting. So I moved around and tried to capture uh, an image of the audience without the fire eater, uh, and I did, but it just didn't work for me. The image needed the fire eater in the foreground and the audience and their reactions as the contextual background. So I captured this image. Uh, I would have liked for the depth of field to have been more. If you notice, you don't have to look too closely to see that the audience is not perfectly in focus. The fire eater is. He's the subject of this photograph. So the fire eater was in perfect focus. But the sun was going down, the light was getting dimmer, and I could not get the optimum depth of field to make the audience also perfectly focused. You can do that. It is possible with depth of field to have the foreground and the background equally totally focused. But I could not accomplish that here. But I was satisfied enough with the level of focus on the audience that I kept this image and it has been in different shows in different cities around the country. Uh, I love the reaction of the crowd. It's just amazing how they get into the experience of uh, the fire eater eating the fire. One boy's got his mouth adjusted. Other people, are their eyes are kind of big. You know, that's the context. The fire eater is the subject, but he's just not an entertainer for the sake of entertaining. He entertains to get a reaction from the audience. The audience is the contextual backdrop, the contextual background, so to speak, of this image. So I was pleased with it. It could have been better. One of my problems is I always see that the image could be better in some way. But they just don't do Sunset Pier when the sun's higher in the sky. The sun's always going down at Sunset Pier. So I have to deal, all photographers have to deal with the quality of light during the process of the sun going down. So I said I would give you a broader background about complex images. Uh, I like complex images. Everybody does not. Uh, the people who do not like complex images do not buy complex images. So, you know, at times, uh, two main times really, I've gone to photo reviews. Uh, they're called another name, but it escapes me at the moment where you sit down with your portfolio in front of a reviewer who gives you feedback uh, on your photos in context of what I need to do differently to sell more photos. Because when you're trying to be a photographer, you need to sell things every now and then, and photos are a good thing to sell. I went to a photo review in Portland, Oregon. They have a big one every year. I think it's called Photo Lucia. Uh, and the photo reviewer that I got uh, was from New Jersey. They randomly assigned. Uh, the lady looked through the images. She said, I really like your images, blah, blah, blah. You know, congratulations. But, big but, your images are too complex. There's too much going on in your images. People will not buy them because there's just too much going on. And I said, why won't people buy complex images? She said, most people in America buy art that goes along with or enhances the other furnishings in the room. Complex images don't really enhance other furnishings in the room. Complex images don't make your couch look better. They're complex and people start staring at the picture instead of looking at how beautiful the room is. So the photo reviewer in Portland, Oregon said, you'll never sell many photos because they're too complex. You need to simplify your photos. Well, there was no reason to disagree or argue with the photo reviewer. 
Uh, she went her way and I went mine. A couple years later, when I was studying photography uh, in Prague, I took my portfolio with me, the same portfolio, and I went to a photo event in Prague and had an English-speaking reviewer review my photos. He congratulated me, said they were really great photos, and he said, people are going to love them. You'll sell a lot of these photos. So I told him what the photo reviewer said in Portland. And his response was, oh, those are Americans. Uh, in Europe, there are more photo collectors. He said, your photos will not apply to interior, or will not appeal to interior decorators, but they will appeal to photo collectors. And you know what? He was right. I've sold the most photos to people who identify as photo collectors. I've actually sold more photos in Europe uh, than I have in the United States. In fact, at one point, I quit selling photos in the United States except for one, uh, one entity, one online entity. And I'm about to add a second. I'm not giving up on Americans. I just know uh, generally Americans aren't attracted to my images, and if they're not attracted, they're not going to buy them. So I do sell more photos. I have sold more photos in Europe and New York City, which is a lot like Europe. I've sold several photos in New York City because there are collectors in New York City. Uh, just a little side note, I will tell you that both reviewers, the one in Portland and the one in Prague, made a common statement about me. They both liked my photos. They thought they were beautiful. Uh, but they also said, this was very disturbing at the time, they both said, I don't think your photos will really catch on to collectors until after you're dead. And both times I said, wow, that's really a high price to pay to have people buy my photographs. Uh, so I've made sure and tell my wife and daughter that, uh, you know, after I'm gone, there may be a market for my photos. So you have to decide for yourself if you want your images to be complex. Personally, I can't help myself. I cannot create an image in which there's not a lot going on. That's just my nature. But you can do what you want to do and create images that probably will sell a lot better than mine sell, and they probably will sell in your lifetime. You won't have to wait till you're dead uh, for your photos to be successful. Okay, that's all I have to say about this image. I meant to write it down, but I forgot what the next image is. Um, but it will be in a couple of days. So I'll be back in a couple of days with uh, photo post number 13. As always, I appreciate your attention. I appreciate that you're interested in the know and knowing what's going on in my head. Even like with this uh, particular post and the last one, I'm talking more about techniques as opposed to my way of viewing the world. Again, thank you, and I'll see you next time.